projectiles. Here we have our beautiful winter scene that I've set up. And the first thing we're gonna need is some targets to shoot projectiles at. So I was thinking Hello. maybe we could... Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. These things are disgusting. We have to kill them immediately. Ugh. Nobody panic. I know exactly the kind of character we need to exterminate snowmen. That's right. A ninja. I know what you all might be thinking. This is a completely thematically consistent character. To which, you know, I would agree. But for some of the skeptics, because I know they're going to be out there, they might think, hey, you can't use a ninja to fight a snowman. I mean, he can't even jump across the chasm. How is he going to do anything? But this, you see, is where I need to educate you. Because you see, I saw on TV that ninjas can shoot fireballs. And you know what snowmen hate? Fireballs. And so I don't see any reason why we can't make our ninja shoot fireballs and also make these snowmen hate fireballs. It doesn't seem too hard to do. In fact, it only takes just a few minutes. So let's hop over to the Unity editor and we can get started. It might not seem it if you're new to Unity, but firing projectiles is actually one of the easier things you get to do, which is great because there's so many gameplay options available to you once you get projectiles going in your game. I'm gonna walk through what I have set up in this scene here. I did use some free assets and I'll link those below if anyone's interested. On our player, we just have a rigid body 2D, a box collider 2D, and I made a player movement script, which I showcased in another video, which I'll link in the card above. By all means, you do not have to have this. Whatever your player movement script, I'm sure it would do just fine. On our snowman, we have a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D as well. Not too much going on, pretty standard stuff. In our assets folder, we also have a fireball prefab and a fireball impact prefab. And if you're new to Unity and you've never even heard of that term before, prefab, then definitely write that down on your list of things to learn. They're incredibly powerful tools and they're pretty standard in most Unity projects. I'm pretty sure everyone uses them. So yeah, definitely check those out. I'm not gonna cover too much here, but they're basically objects that you can put into an asset and then reuse. So in this fireball object, all we have going on is an animation and a rigid body 2D and our fireball impact, it's just an animation. So we can actually play this and they'll just play like this. So that's what we got going on. But in terms of scene setup, that's completely it. So we're starting from scratch for everything else. And you can adapt this to wherever your project's at. So the first thing we wanna do is actually create a new C-sharp script. I'll come down to the assets folder and right click and create C-sharp script. I'm going to call this player attack. We can then drag our player attack script onto our player object and we'll see it attached. So let's open up player attack. Let's take one second and consider what our problem actually is. What do we want to do? We want to get an input from the player. I'm thinking I'm going to use the left mouse button, but we basically want to have some sort of button press or something like that to trigger actually firing a projectile. So we'll get our input from a player. Then we want to spawn a projectile, right? So we take a game object, some sort of bullet or fireball or arrow or whatever your projectile is, and we need to spawn it in the scene. But to do that, we need to know where to spawn the projectile. And that's essentially it. We want an input, we spawn it, and we want to know where we want to spawn it. We can actually go up and create some new variables. To get a position, we need a transform, because that stores position and rotation. So we need a public transform, and I'm going to call this fire position. You could also call it fire point or projectile start position, whatever makes sense to you. And then we also need a public game object projectile. So for me, this is gonna be the fireball I showed before. For you, it might be a bullet or an arrow or a magic spell, it could be whatever. We can then get rid of our start method because we're actually not using it. And we can actually focus on implementing the logic for this functionality. So getting player input. Again, I'm gonna be using the left mouse button. So for that, all you need to do is say if our input dot get mouse button down. So when I press down the mouse, uh, which mouse zero or one zero is the left mouse, one is the right mouse. So we want left. If our left mouse button has been pressed, then we want to instantiate our projectile at the fire position dot position using the fire position dot rotation. And that's it. So let's save and go back into the Unity Editor. And from here, when we click on our player, we'll notice we have these new variables on our player attack script. 
So we need to define what we want our position to spawn projectiles to be. To do this, we can just right click on our player and hit create empty. And then I'll rename the game object to fire position. If we go to the movement tool, we can move it around. And so if you're using a character that has maybe a weapon, then it would make sense to put this maybe at the barrel of the gun, or if you're using like a bow, something that would make sense for that. For me, I'm just gonna have it off to the side of his face. So my ninja will be spitting fireballs, which is pretty intense. Once you've set up where you want that to be, you can click on your player and we'll drag our fire position object onto our fire position variable. And then for me, I'm gonna drag my fireball projectile that I set up in a prefab and put that into the projectile variable. And for now, that's a wrap on our player attack script. If you head into the game view, you can now click around and guess what, you're spawning projectiles, or in my case, fireballs. But they're not moving or doing anything interesting, so we need to make a new script. I'm gonna go back into my assets folder and right click and create a new c -sharp script, which I'll call projectile. And I'll open that up in Visual Studio. Our projectile script is actually gonna be really simple as well. We're gonna need a few variables, so let's cover that first. Our first variable is going to be a public float projectile speed. So this is gonna be configurable from the editor of how fast we want our projectile to move. And then we'll also need a private rigidbody2d rigidbody. We can get rid of our update method because we don't need it. And in our start method, we just wanna set our rigidbody.velocity equal to our transform dot right. The right of our transform is actually just the x-axis. And we wanna multiply that by our projectile speed. Before doing this, we actually wanna set up our reference too. So we wanna say rigid body equals get component of type rigid body 2D. And this will search our game object for a component of rigid body 2D and store it in this reference. At the beginning of the video, I showed you that I had a fireball impact effect and we're gonna be implementing that here. If you don't think you need some sort of effect for your projectile, then you don't need to be doing this part and you can skip ahead. But if you do think you want something like that, then it's actually really easy. What we need is a new variable, so we need a public game object of impact effect. We then need a new method called void on trigger enter 2D. This is one of the pre-built Unity methods they provide for you. And so this method gets fired when a collider who has the trigger flag enabled collides with a, another object in the scene that has a collider as well, which might sound a little confusing, but it's not too bad. When you're first starting out, you'll see a lot of people do something along the lines of if your collision.tag is equal to enemy, then you'll usually see something along the lines of destroy the collision.game object, and then you'll follow it up with destroy game object. And so you'll check for the game object of this collision, and if the tag is enemy, which in the Unity editor, you can click on say the snowman, and then your inspector you would see that we have a tag up here. So you can set that to enemy. And if the tag is equal to enemy, then you destroy that game object and you destroy the projectile. Comparing strings is not really a smart way of doing it, in my opinion. An alternative to this you might see would be something along the lines of var enemy component equals get component of type enemy or maybe enemy health or you know, whatever component script that you would like. And if your enemy component is not equal to null, so you found one on the other object, then you destroyed, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna do either of these methods. I'm just gonna let it ride as is. If it collides with anything, it's going to do this. And similar to what we did with the projectile, we want to instantiate this new impact effect. We want to give it a position. So I will do transform.position. So at the position of this projectile. And for rotation, I want to say quaternion.identity. We then want to destroy this game object, which is the game object this script is attached to. So in our case, the fireball. Back in the Unity engine, we can click on our fireball and scroll down to projectile. And I'll set the default speed to maybe 10 and we'll see how that feels. And I'll take my fireball impact that I made and I'll drag that into the variable for impact effect. One last thing, on our fireball, we wanna scroll up to our circle collider 2D. And we just wanna make sure that whatever your collider is that you're using, that is trigger is checked. This is because we're using on trigger enter 2D instead of on collision enter 2D. And the real difference between triggers and colliders is that triggers will go through objects while colliders will not. 
in our case we're destroying our game object anyway so it actually doesn't make a difference but it gave us an excuse to talk about it and that's important in our game view, we should now expect our projectile to be moving, and when it collides with one of these snowmen, it should be generating an impact effect. So it is, and it looks really good. This is exactly what we're looking for. Once you get to this stage, there's so many different ways you can build up this foundation we set up. It's really up to you and the game that you're making to adjust this to fit whatever your game needs. Hopefully this tutorial helped you guys out. If it did, please leave a like. If you're having trouble, leave a comment. I usually try my best to get back to you if you ask any questions. For future tutorials, be sure to- Oh my god. Subscribe.